pulling something from your future. This is God. And this is a process that each one of us has in our life, is what we were trying to show last week, if you remember. We are kind of reviewing. And one of the things that we have to learn is that this is something that we do all the time. And I'm going to show it to you today how we do this all the time. Okay? Let's just say that you go to work tomorrow morning. And you're standing in work and you got up in the morning and you're feeling pretty good. Right? One person says one thing to you. And what happened? One negative thing to you. That negative thing, is it real? No. No. Does it feel real? It does yeah. at the time. Yeah. It feels absolutely real, doesn't it? Yeah. When they say that one negative thing to you, what happened while that negative thing was said to you? What happened? You're pissed off. You're talking to yourself. It's yeah. going around in your mind. <laughs> Man, you're doing stuff good, Dean. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I keep Dean. saying Dean this morning because I just got off the phone with Dean in Jamaica. <laughs> okay, I heard Dean this morning. <laughs> so, anyway... So you have this, all of a sudden there's like a, uh, a movie that starts to play over and over again in your brain, isn't it? That, all, that makes this negative mode just take right off. Kind of like a seed that grows and all of a sudden it spurts out and lets off other seeds and it's like a bad disease, isn't it? Or a bad movie. Well, if I told you and gave you the idea of something good, okay, would you believe and feel that that was real. Wait, say that again? If I said something, you got up in the morning, everything's fine, and all of a sudden you come to work and I say something good to you, right? What, what do we mostly do with that good? Take mm. it and we think about it all day long. Mm. Oh yeah. Swirl it around. <laughs> we, we actually gravitate towards the negative and believe it's more real than the positive. Mm -hmm. That's the way we are as human beings. And so, what I'm trying to show you is, is that this is a tool that we've learned to misuse our entire lives. And this is the very tool that teaches us how to hear the voice of God in our life. Because when the voice of God comes in our life, what happens? We miss it, we don't hear it, and then we wonder, is God talking to me at all in my life? I don't even think God talks. That's what happens to us. So anything positive or good gets put aside, anything negative becomes real. Terribly real. And so what we're doing is, is we're, so for instance, you go into work, a coworker says, you know, I don't like the way you look at me. I don't know. I'm trying to think of something. That, <laughs> whatever it is, right? All right? And suddenly, what goes on in your mind? I wonder if I'm going to be fired today. Maybe they all know about it. Maybe there's a problem in my life. Maybe this, maybe that. And what do we do? We start pulling up images that start speaking to us, right? Like a movie. Like a movie, an image, just like a movie theater. And when you go to a movie theater, what do, you, what do they play the images on? Mm. A big movie screen, right? That's your movie screen. Okay? In the Bible, it's called an image maker. Okay? <laughs> In Hebrew, it's called a yetz, yetzer. All right? You know, if you have your Bible in Hebrew, so I can't show it to you. All right? If you read this, where it says, and God made man in his image and his likeness, that word image is Yetzer. Okay? It is a screen. What does it tell you about yourself? If God made you in his image, what is the image? Is the image real? Yeah. It is? I don't know. I mean, I'm Feels real, God, doesn't it? Picturing God making me, you know. If we catch this today, it would change your life, by the way. All right. Just if I'm going too deep, raise your hand and slow me down. All right. So what we're learning about is this image maker. This thing that produces the image that everything around us tells us what should be on it. The problem is, let's see if I can do it. Take your... Okay. Hope you can see it. I'm not a very good Italian chef. Okay. Okay, good. It worked. All right. <laughs> anyway, can you all see that? Look at the inside of that. There's a pattern inside, isn't there? Mm -hmm. Can you see it? Everybody knows it. Yep. All right. And on the outside, what do you have? You have skin. the shell, the skin. Where did the shell come from? The seed growing. Well, no, the shell, the actual shell itself. What was it at one time? Protect the, protect the, like, what? 
It was from the inside, right? And what happened? As it grew out, right, it created a shell. And that shell protects it, right? So whenever the inside begins to create, right, it, has an, it creates an image, all right? And it's usually like a little round circle that begins to grow, right? And begins to grow. And it's growing from the inside out. As it grows out, this is, was your present, but is now becomes the future tense, right? Isn't that what that becomes? Well, our thoughts in our head, when we come from here, these are called dead thoughts, aren't they? Where we live on the outside. Why is it that when you got to work that day and someone said something negative to you, right? You received it, okay, as reality. Because where are you living? The on the outside. If you were living on the inside, would that have affected you? Because you have a protective shell. Because you have a protective shell, which was the original, yeah, right? What came in from the inside. What came from the inside. So if you live from the inside out, what's going to happen? You're going to have good thoughts, hopefully, right? And you're going to be able to live a good life. What does the Word of God teach us? It says that the kingdom of God is where? On the outside? It's on the inside. And so what we're learning is just from, the, from nature itself is that when we learn to live from the inside, right, what God does is He teaches us how to live where life is because where is the lack of life is on the outside. Okay? Everybody, even Ava get that? <laughs> all right? Any questions at all? Yeah, well, I don't understand that. What do you mean the lack of life is on the outside? Is this live or dead? What, that? Dead. It's dead. It's not receiving life anymore from the inside. It's not as strong as it's in the Right? On the inside, it's still alive. Even when this is cut off from the thing, it's still got life. And if I take that and plant it, well, I probably just cut it in half, but if I plant it, right? Get tree. I'll get a half a tree. <laughs> I'll get an onion again, won't I? Mm -hmm. An onion will grow from, if they were together, I don't even know if you could do it in half. Right? Yeah. You can do it a half one? Yeah. Okay. Well, that root system is not the other yeah. And then you see it'll grow out because it's really, a, this is a bulb, you know? Mm -hmm. If you live in the New England area, you remember in the springtime, you get all these bulbs, we put them in the ground and they sprout as soon as the snow melts. Right? Didn't happen in Queens, though. <laughs> they didn't have no plants there. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, you plant it. Okay, so what does that tell you about you and I? If we're living from the inside, wherever God has planted you, what's going to happen? There's going to be growth in your life. So when someone says to you, well, I think I'm in the wrong place in my life. I'm this in my life. I'm that in my life. Everything's terrible in my life. The whole world is falling apart. What are they believing? The outside. The outside. And the outside was. But where should they be believing? The from the inside. And we're going to learn about that inside today, how that inside works. Okay, so that you can learn to grow wherever you're planted. So when you go to work that morning, this is the only example I could think of this morning, someone says something negative to you, right? You don't start playing the bad movie anymore. The bad movie is what? It's the outside that grew out, right? And what happened to the outside? What does it do? Someone said it gives you protection, right? Well, what do you do when you're protecting yourself? You know, you go see those boxers out there and they have their hands up so that they protect their face, right? All the time. They're protecting themselves. Why do they protect themselves? What caused you to protect yourself? <laughs> the past, right? You know that if you don't do this, you're going to get hit here, <laughs> right? So you learn to do this. Then you get schools that are built that teach you how to do this so that they look at you and say, if you don't put your hands up, you're going to get hit. <laughs> And they get hit, and what happens? They learn to put their hands up, right? It's like a little kid that goes up to the stove. They don't know the stove is hot until when? They touch it. Then they know, don't touch the stove, or you're going to get burned. All right? These are really just simple truths. But we fail to understand simple truths because we don't know how to connect the dots. And that's what we're going to try and do, and we're trying to do in this series. How to hear God's voice, just like you're in a training school. How do you learn to hear God's voice in your life? Well, when the, when the, the first time you hear God's voice in the Garden of Eden, what happened? 
first of all, God says to Adam what? Of all the trees in the garden you can eat, right? But of the one tree you cannot eat, which was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Right? And then uh, what happens when the other voice comes to Eve and says, Hey, what did God say to you? Oh, he says, we can eat all the trees, but we can't eat the, one, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil because that tree, okay, that day we eat that tree, we will die. We can't even touch it, which it doesn't say that in the Bible. If I, I'm not going to go read it right now. Okay? And so what happened? The devil made it look good to make one wise, it says. All right? You guys know where that re reads in? Well, I mean, I... Just, you know it? Good. All right. I don't know if I should go there, actually. <laughs> it's in Genesis chapter 2. Look good to make one wise. And what happens? She sees it and she says, Ah, oh, I want to be wise. But what's the snake represent? The outside, actually. He represents the outside, saying, Hey, if you do these things, you're going to look wise. You're going to look great. You're going to look fantastic. And isn't that what the world wants you to do? Hey, you don't want people to look at you that way. Wouldn't that scare you? Doesn't that scare you already? You don't want people to think of you that way. What's wrong with you? You think you're a Christian? You look like a Christian? You act like a Christian? And so what happens is we get influenced by the outside instead of from the inside. All right? Now, in order to go to the inside, you have to be able to look at, you have to be able to know that you're looking at this movie screen. So, where is that movie screen? Anybody remember? Yeah, wait a minute, where, where is the movie screen? Yeah. It plays in your head, right? Is it? It plays in your head, but at a certain part of your head. Sixth sense? Your sixth sense. Okay. Getting close. So you wrote a note then? <laughs> what? Subconscious. Your subconscious, maybe? But there's a, I'm looking for something very Wait, specific. What, what again? What, what was it's again? more simpler than that. Say it again. Say it right? Again. You look at me, Ron, and I go, I'm going to kill that mother. I'm going to kill him. Your mind. But it's a certain part of your mind. Thought. Your thought? But what is it? It's the emotional part. Right? The emotional part of your mind. We call it your heart. <laughs> you don't go, I'm going to logically figure this out and figure out why he doesn't like me. Most of the time, okay, we're not that way. <laughs> Most of the time, we're like, I'm just going to knock him out. I can't believe this guy is driving me insane. <laughs> right? That means it's affecting us emotionally. That also tells us that that emotional part of us can not only change your world, but it can change their world as well, can it? Because if you become emotional, when someone says something to you negative, they're not feeling emotionally positive, are they? And what happens? Man, I'm having a bad day. Because those people have looked at me the wrong way. Are you following me? So this screen is actually is the emotional part of your mind. Alright? So what we're going to learn, what we're learning is, is how we're going to be able to use this tool it, because it's like a, we know how to see, right? We know how to hear, right? We know how to feel. I hope so, right? You know, I went a little rough. <coughs> I remember the last when I was in Wyoming like, a couple weeks ago, my, my sister wanted to do a two-step with me, you know, because they're all a bunch of Westerners. And she grabbed my hand with her hand. And my sister is younger than me. But she is a cow farmer, you know, very, very tough girl. Her hands were so rough. And I live here in South Florida and we're, you know, we're not used to that, you know. And I just go, oh my gosh, this, this girl could take me. And she's, come on, Lee. And I'm thinking, you guys even just dance weird around here. That's called two-step. So we can feel, we can see, there's five senses, right? What are the five senses? Smell. Smell. Hearing. 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 Seeing. Sight. sight. We already said sight. Taste. Taste. Feel. And feel. Five senses. What I'm showing you is you have a sixth one. 
Now you have all the movies out there, right? And you have all these different things out there that say the sixth sense or the fifth element. <laughs> you know what I mean? All these different things out there. But in actuality, this is a place that you live all the time. But you just don't, we don't know how to use it. That's the problem. We live here all the time. Because if you didn't live here, you'd be dead. This would be gone. It would, be in the, it would have rotted. All right? I just ruined that. But to make some sauce with it. All right? So, write these down. We're going to go through a couple of... Um, you need some paper. If you, if you, don't, you don't have to write it down. It's not that hard to remember, actually. So, <clears throat> there are four things that we have to remember. Okay? In order for you to be able to recognize this, all right, you have to quiet yourself down. So the Word of God says, Be still and know that I am God. All right? Be still and know that I am God. What happens when we see a bad picture on this screen? We get all excited and we lose our peace, don't we? Our sense of even who we are sometimes. We get so mad, or, or sometimes we stew on it for a while. It says, I'm not going to let that control me. But before you know it, it's controlled you anyway. All right? This is human nature. All right? If it doesn't happen to you, I would also think there was something wrong with you as well. All right? So, we're going to learn to calm our, we're going to learn to, to quiet ourselves down. You've got to get into a place of being quiet. And then you have to be able to see this. I used an example last week of, um, of two scientists. One was Albert Einstein and one was, <clears throat> um, um, was Thomas Edison. <coughs> okay, we would say they're pretty extraordinary. We're living under light bulbs right now, which was, right, invented by Thomas Edison. These are people that, whether they knew God or not, I don't know. I know that I've read about Albert Einstein and he believed that God was a God that created everything and then removed himself. Okay, if you want to know, he called it the God of Spinoza because Spinoza was a, I don't know if anybody read him in school, okay, he was a, you know, during the time of what we call the age of reason and God was outside and we were, on, we were here. You know what I mean? He stayed outside. But anyway, but he used a gift that he had, a tool that he had that he began to understand. When he went to figure out, let's just say, for instance, the, the theory of relativity. If the theory of relativity says, you know, it's, the, it's the using energy to measure matter. All right? What he did was, to do that, to understand it, is he had to, he imagined himself riding on a stream of light. <laughs> and he imagined what would happen when he did it. And that's how he came up with E equals M3, M3 squared, MC squared. That's how he came up with that. The ability to take this image maker, and he used it, for something good. We do it, our bodies naturally do it, by the way. When you go to sleep at night, okay, if you didn't dream, okay, dreaming is like <clears throat> um, taking, you know, you go into the office and you have tons of files. And all the files are out. Well, what dreaming does, is it actually takes all the files and puts them back in place. And sometimes those dreams are whacked out. Because what you're doing is, is you're reenacting what you have gone through during the day 95% of the time in your dream state. And it's just refiling stuff so that you can stay sane. What happens when your office becomes totally a mess? You're a mess. You're a mess. They say that your office on the outside reflects what's going on in the inside. So a lot of times in my office, if it's really messy, I remember that. And I go, man, I must be a mess inside. I better start cleaning up. <laughs> That's all, right? <clears throat> And so, um, there, I'll give you a little quick story. You can suggest what happens on this screen. Once there was a very wise man. And the wise man goes to the king, and he says to, and the king says, Hey, what do you think of this? What do you think of this? Well, listen, I'm going to tell you something. You're going to see this in your dream. You're going to see that in your dream, okay, that you're going to get a golden scepter, and you're going to rule over the next kingdom. <clears throat> he goes, I am. The guy goes, oh yeah, okay. The guy goes to sleep at night, wakes up the next morning, and he has a dream that he has a new scepter and he's going to rule over the next kingdom, right? He, he, says, he calls up the, uh, the great wise men in his kingdom and says, you're an amazing guy. Unbelievable. You could predict what I'm going to dream. 
And the guy says, no, I'm just trying to show you an example. When I told you that that's what you're going to dream, that's why you dreamed it. <laughs> okay? What does it tell you about you? Whatever's suggested to that screen is what it's going to be emotionally. Your emotions have the ability to change your life. <laughs> if you learn to take this screen and work with it the way God intended to, we're just handicapped. So what are we going to learn to do? We hear in the Bible it tells about Joseph. Let's go to, to uh, I'll quickly get it for you. Everybody knows about Joseph, the dreamer? Okay, I'm going to go to Exodus. Let me get it. I was hoping to have this up, but I only have... I can't print my notes today. <laughs> my printer died. Oh, uh, here we go. Okay. Everybody following so far? Finding it interesting? Yeah. Okay. Okay. It would be... Uh, Genesis. Exodus or Genesis? No, Genesis. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> the first dream that he had. <clears throat> was about the um, his his brothers. Genesis what? I'm getting it. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Uh, Genesis chapter 37. <clears throat> right in the beginning of the Bible. <laughs> okay, chapter, verse 4. <clears throat> Genesis chapter 37, verse 4. And when his brother, everybody find it? <clears throat> and when, when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not, peaceably, could not speak peaceably unto him. And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told of it, of it his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. And he said unto them, Here I pray you this dream which I have dreamed. For behold, we were binding sheaves in, a field, in the field, and lo, my sheaves rose up, and also stood upright, and behold, your sheaves stood up around about, and made up ob absence to my sheaves. He worshipped the sheaves, to his sheaf. And his brethren said to him, Shalt thou indeed reign over us? Or shalt thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. And he dreamed yet another dream, and told it to his brethren and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more, and, it, and behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made <clears throat> absence to me. And he told it to his father and to his brethren, and his father rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed have to come down and observe, uh, and come down our, bow down ourselves to thee, to the earth? And his brethren envied him, but his father observed the sayings. So, here you go, you see a dream. What were, so, where would the dream be? It would be on this image maker, right? That's where Joseph was having it. Just like you and I would have a dream. But this is obviously a prophetic dream. Because we know the story, what happens? 
years later, they're bowing down to Joseph because they're hungry and they have to go to Egypt after they sold him. Remember the story? And then they have to, just before you know it, they're bowing down. We read in Exodus, bowing down to his, their brother. And they didn't realize who he was until he revealed himself. But how does God put it together? Does he tell directly that he's going to, that this is going to happen? He uses these sheaves. You know what a sheave is? It's like a bundle of wheat. All right? And the bundle of wheat, my bundle of wheat was in the middle, and your bundles of wheat were around paying homage to my bundle of wheat. So what would you call those? Protector. What? Protector. A protector? No? Subjects. Subjects? Now think about what a, the bundle of wheat represents in the dream. Food. Food? Uh, the outside. They, uh, no? They're what? They're images that represent who? Each bundle of wheat on the outside represented who? The brothers. the brothers and also the mother and the father. Okay? And the one in the middle represented himself. You see that? What does that tell you about dreams? That dreams are going to be in code. They're going to be in these images. This is how it works. This is how scripture teaches. Every single dream you find in scripture, that's how it's going to be. That there's these images that you're going to see. That's because that's how your mind works. When you go to work that day, the reason why someone can say something to you that negatively knocks you off is because it represents an image in your mind. And it broadcasts that image. And you don't have a lot of control over it. As much as you say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a good day today. I don't care what anybody says about me. <laughs> <laughs> Did anybody see the reports this week that, of the um, impending earthquake in the northwest part of the United States? <clears throat> Something odd has happened. This is why the report came out. Is that they have these sensors under the ocean and on the land that are always sensing the earthquake zones. This is something that scientists do all the time because they're trying to, you know, make sure that people are safe. Well, oddly enough, in the northwest corner of the United States, like Washington, Oregon, and Northern California, the induction zones, they call them, okay, have stopped recording. They've stopped moving. You know, I don't know if you know what that means, is that in order for that kind of earthquake to take place, you've got one plate that is moving on top of other very slow. That's why you have little earthquakes all the time. You know what I mean? It, it pops and pops and pops. Well, when it stops popping like that, it stops moving like that, it means that pressure is building up. Have you ever been in your, in, you know, I'm sure each one of us have been in a place where we say we're not going to respond to that or we're not going to do anything. But somehow, some way, there's a response, no matter how it is. Because why? You might have stopped moving here, but eventually what's going to happen? Pop. Well, that's what's going on with the earth itself. I'm just using it as an example, if you've seen it on the news, is that earth itself has stopped that moving, so what take, what's taking place? Pressure is beginning to build, and their fear is, is that it's going to pop. And so they're warning the people in, in, in the northwest corner of the United States that you really start, you've got to start preparing for that thing to happen. Okay? The same thing happens to you and I. When an image has been recorded on this, it's become, it becomes real to you. It becomes real. When it happened to Joseph, what happened with the brothers? They go, give me a break. In fact, at one point, you'll hear about Jacob sends his son Joseph, okay, to go and find his other brother in a little town called Dathan. Okay? When they go out to look for him, all right, they, he see, the brothers see him coming. They go, here comes the dreamer. <laughs> He's a, all he does is dream. And his dreams are saying that you're going to bow down to me. And then what are they going to do? They say, we're going to kill him. Right? And they throw him into a ditch. And they say, the ditch is dry. And it's uh, not a good place to be. And then when they want to kill him, instead of killing him, they take blood and they put it on his clothing, on his coat of many colors. They sell him off. And then those same dreams, okay, what happens to the dream? The dream becomes, gets fulfilled, doesn't it? By what? Circumstances that are beyond your control. 
in your life. The same thing goes on in your life. Is you have these images and these dreams in your life. And so one of the things that we remember in our assignment was is to write down these images. And many times these images that you have in your life do not have a way of connecting in your logical mind. Okay? How many of us have those images in our mind that don't seem to connect with anything? That's why they have dream interpreters. <laughs> they don't seem to connect. Be very careful of dream interpreters. Because the most important thing about a dream is the interpretation of the dream. Because if you now equate an image that you receive because of something that was said, okay, you either got to turn that dream around, right? You got to change what it represents or what's going to happen. It's going to fulfill its purpose. So you got, let's just say, how about the guy up in um, this weekend? We had the guy that shot up those five guns. Horrible. Terrible thing that we do. Where do you think this guy, what happened to his image maker? Snapped. <laughs> it snapped. Somebody put an image on his brain that took certain actions or whatever it was that said, if this happens, this is what it means. I mean, we can't go into his brain, but we can only imagine what goes on inside our brains. Okay? And it created a negative image and we created a reaction. Because the way that life works, everything works out first with thought. The second thing that takes place is speech. You begin to bring it to the outside. You begin to talk about it, all right, to the right people. What was the, one of the things that his closest friend said after he went to the Middle East? He wasn't the same. He removed himself. Remember, I don't know if you guys watched the news stories. And he sort of became, you know, black. Because why? If he exposed himself to his normal friends, what would have happened? They might have seen that, hey, Charlie, whatever his name was, you might want to rethink what you're thinking, buddy. <laughs> you know? So we hide them and we'd say, this is going to be my interpretation, and that's the end of it. Yeah, posted something too on his Facebook. They said that was like a little disturbing. Yeah. People saw that, that they wish that, like, you know, and it could have been that that went by as far back as your childhood. So, for instance, if a dad says to you, you'll never amount to anything, you little lousy kid, right? What is that kid going to do when he gets to work? Well, I'm not going to succeed anyway, right? And so he's got an image that's been put into his head. This has become, now you can see how important this little sense is that we discount most of our lives. And this is where God speaks to us. I haven't even gotten to that point yet. I wanted you to see the tool that you have. So God does this. He allows us to have this. It's learning to use it that's going to make up the difference in your life. I am not the voice of God in your life. God is. <laughs> and you have to have the right images to, to work with it. All right? So, go back to the, our note here. So, in order to be able to start to work with this, all right, is you've got to quiet yourself down. The second thing that you want to do is you want to be able to fix your eye. Say that again. Fix your fix eye. Your, eye like what, what you your mind's eye. eye. Oh, okay. okay, you learn to fix your mind's eye on Jesus. Jesus is the best thing that ever came to earth, right? No. We would all agree with that? Mm -hmm. So if Jesus is the best thing, the good thing, we want to fix our eyes there. Okay? So... We're going to learn to fix our eyes on Jesus, and we're going to articulate that in a minute. And then we want to um, we want to turn to spontaneity. Why to spontaneity? Spontaneity. Is yeah. Really... Spontaneity. You know what spontaneity means? Uh -huh. No. Uh -huh. You walk into the house and you go, "Man, you are the most beautiful woman I ever saw in my entire life." That's. <laughs> you know what we normally do? We walk into the house and we go. You always and you never. <laughs> of course, my wife's not here because she'll say, that's what you do. <laughs> and so when we do that, what have we done? Spontaneity does what? If we were spontane sp spontaneous and, we were and we our eyes were fixed on the good, what would our spontaneity do? It would project the good. If our spontaneity is based on the negative, what's it going to do? 
going to project the negative. That's right. And so we learn in our life that if we're, spot, we're spontaneous, okay, and we're going to go through that in a minute, then we can learn how in our life to use this. So you're driving home, okay. My worst fear, I'll get a call in the morning, he says, honey, you know what we're having for dinner? We're having blah, 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 blah. What just happened? Set up a dinner image. He set up a dinner image. Now men, when they get a dinner image, okay, what do they get in their brain? They savor it all day. They savor it all day. What happens when, oh, I changed my mind. <laughs> well, I'm not worried no more. <laughs> what? <laughs> Just tell her it's good. <laughs> That's the way we are as human beings, right? See the war that goes on inside of us constantly. That's just a simple way, all right, to understand it. It's learning to be spontaneous. So first thing you've got to do, if you're going to control this image maker, you're a Yatzer, as the Word of God teaches us it is, you're going to have to learn how to understand that you are projecting images onto it. Just like Joseph did. What happened? He got a dream. There's daydreams and there's night dreams. It's all throughout Scripture. If you don't dream at night, believe me, you do. If you say you don't dream at night, you believe me, you do. You just don't remember them because your brain has a way of getting rid of them immediately. You have to tell your brain, I am going to remember them. You say, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, I, I, this image maker is like a horse. Okay? You can either train it or you can let it run wild. Most of us let it run wild. All right? And you've got to learn to put a saddle on it. Okay, put some stirrups on your boots, okay, and you want to put reins in your hand and say, no, I'm in charge of what goes on here. Not you, not the world, not everything around you. I'm in charge. So what are you going to do? You're going to quiet yourself down. Isn't that what a horse trainer does? He trains that horse in. He gets that horse to know him. All right? A really good trainer can get a horse to do anything. All right? In Argentina, they have some of the best horse trainers in the world. Right? If you've ever seen some of the, the footage of them, it's unbelievable. And they can pull it, they can pull a horse in, they can train them to do anything that they want. You're going to put a saddle on it, and you're going to put stirrups on it, and you're going to take charge. That's what we're going to do with it. And then you're going to learn. Okay, that's what this here is, the, is that you're going to learn to draw or take what you want your future to be like and you're going to bring it to the present time. This is your present time. God is a present tense God. He works in the present time. He, that's why it says the day of, today is the day of salvation. Not tomorrow, not yesterday. He says today is the day of salvation. So what are you going to put on your image maker? The goodness of God. What does the goodness of God say? My plans for you are good. And for blessing. Right? What does the devil say? My plans for you are for bad. My plans are for curse you. I want you to fail. Okay? So, when you have spontaneous positive thoughts and your eyes are focused on Christ, that allows the Holy Spirit to begin to work in your life. Alright? He is the comforter. Counselor, healer, edifier, teacher, okay? He is your hope, right? And what does the devil want to do? Bring you down. Bring you down, all right? If it's a spontaneous negative thought, a negative thought would be who? Would be the demons around our lives that are constantly attacking us. The fear, doubt, unbelief, Accuser of the brethren who Satan is called. He's constantly accusing you. you. You'll never make it. Who are you? Do you think you have a right? you got to learn what your rights are. And you got to say, hey buddy, I'm in control. This is where your life is. It's on this screen. This is only a projection of that life. Alright? And then the next thing is, is, is the analytical thoughts which is what we're really good at. And depending on what information you have, depends on how bad you're doing with your analytical thoughts, by the way. If you don't have enough information, can you adequately analyze something? 
Our entire Western culture was built on analytical thought, by the way. If we didn't have analytical thought, it's not a terrible thing. We wouldn't have people going to the moon. We wouldn't have, you know, cell phones. You know, they had to learn. In fact, oddly enough, cell phones, you have to have understood not only analytical thought, but spontaneous thought to be able to put one together because it makes no sense from an analytical point of view. Imagine that you're going to talk on a little box, okay? Actually, there, this was 1970. <laughs> and you're going to talk to somebody on the other side of the world. There's no logic to that, right? In this outside world, right here. But if you look from the inside, what does it say? Anything is possible. On the outside, nothing is possible. Right? Because it's dead. Dead thought. So you are a, really a conglomeration of all your thoughts. So we're going to learn to use them. All right? So, analytical thought, okay, is connected thoughts of reason. Okay? If you were to study quantum physics, I don't know if anybody ever looked into quantum physics. I'm the only crazy one. <laughs> I come from a family of people that are into quantum physics, so it's good hard. It gets, I get interested in it. All right? <laughs> So, at any rate, in quantum thought, Newtonian physics tells you that if you cannot feel it, see it, or touch it, or measure it, it's not real. That means that's Newton's laws. Okay? These are his laws. What have we learned now in the last 40 years? You guys went to school. They've taught you that it's different than that now, hasn't it? That it's not, that's, in fact, we've gone away from that. We've learned that you can have <clears throat> things that don't always connect because in the, in the quantum world, all right, Things don't always make sense like they do in Newtonian physics. I know I'm going to go too deep there, so I'm going to leave it there for now. But it's interesting to know that, a, just as an example, an um, a atom can appear here and here at the exact same time. <coughs> Doesn't make any sense, does it? But it can. All right? So, what we're learning today is, is that we're learning how to control this part of our life. How we can control this in our lives. We have to first recognize, and that was what the homework assignment was, recognize what? The um, images that you're seeing. You see. You know? And you just write them down. I saw this image. I saw this image. I saw this image in my day and in my nighttime. Because believe me, if you really understood those images, there's a reason for every one of them being there. And as I said, in your dream state, you think that not, we know that 95% of all your dreams is about your waking life and reorganizing it. All right? We have people that come out of their dream state and they'll come to you and they'll go, God spoke to me. <laughs> be, you should be nervous. Because very few people have learned to use this, including myself. <laughs> because if, if, if an image means something, just like that guy that came out of Jordan, the guy from Tennessee, shot up everybody, right? He got it in his head in a certain way, and what did he do? He acted upon it. So what do we do? It's your thought, your speech, and your actions. Your actions are what? It's the farthest out you can be, okay? Like on this thing here, okay? What are your actions? This is your actions. These are the things that created your outside, who you are how you communicate with the world, okay? Your speech, okay, is how you communicate these actions. I'm going to kill that guy. He's driving me crazy. You know something? They always do that to me. <laughs> or you can say, that. what does the Bible say? It says that, that out of the issues of your mouth, or what? Out of, the issue, out of the issues of your heart flows what? Life. Life itself flows out of your mouth. It's, the, it's Proverbs. And so when you, what, what flows out of your mouth is what is in that emotional part of your mind that has these things on it. You're going to learn how to predict and gauge your future. Where do you want to be? Do you, where, what, you want to be where God wants you? Where He created you? Or are you going to pull from here? This is where God begins to take place in your life and begins to say, I want God. When you have God in your life, really have God in your life, you're you, your awareness of life begins to rise. Where is our society today? It's taking him out, right? So where does that tell you? 
that you still have this. You still have a future. But without God, what's going to happen? It lowers your consciousness of who you are as a society. Because not only is this part of our collective consciousness and our personal consciousness, okay, it is a part of the entire world. If you want to know where the images of the entire world, where do you, where, I made a suggestion one day, where do you watch? All the TV ads. TV ads. Why TV ads? Because they're marketing. They're marketing to? You. To you. <laughs> and they know what you're going to respond to, right? So, you know, I mean, ones that we remember from the 70s and 80s is that Coke adds life. <laughs> I'm just using it as an example. You know what I mean? I don't watch TV as much anymore because I want to be in control of this, what images I see. I watch the news stupidly. <laughs> Sometimes I wish maybe I shouldn't. <laughs> but I want to know what's going on in the world. All right? So you've got to learn how to measure that. You know what I mean? Decide, okay, I'm, I'm just going to do this. Yeah, then you have the other guys that take a TV set and they throw it out. I mean, I don't agree with that either. <laughs> throw it right out the window, right? So anyway, you, what, when you watch a television commercial, it tells you. So recently, where did you see? Anybody watch television lately? Where are the television commercials at? These are images that are being put on your screen. <clears throat> um, medical ones, like if you feel tired and depressed, and someone take uh -huh. that pill, take that. Take that pill. Like a car, like, you know, if you see a car, don't you see yourself yeah. in this car? I love those medical ones because they tell you how good everything's going to get for you, but it's going to cause cancer. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and what have they done? They've learned to use negative for a positive thought. It's called disinformation. Do you know that it was... Uh, I believe it was Albert Ein, no, Albert Ein, no, Sigmund Freud's grandson, I think it was, that was the head of the disinformation during the Vietnam War. <clears throat> I believe that was, I think it was him. I might have it wrong exactly. But he was part of, what he did was, is he was able to learn to use disinformation to, to change the way people, try to change the way people thought. Do you know, after the war was over, guess what? He was hired by corporate America, okay, and the biggest advertising firms in the country, to begin to understand how to talk to that. So this is not something that's unknown. <laughs> it's just that most of us in America, or at least we, we are not aware of the fact that they're using it. You follow me? For instance, I'll give you an example. <clears throat> I'm obviously a conservative Christian. All right? What did you see on TV in the last few weeks? We had gay ads on television, right? Saying that that was love. But what happens to us? We start to say, oh, okay, so what are their job? To change the image that is broadcasted onto our screen and make it okay. In 20 years from now, what are our children going to be? They're going to be more liberal than they are than we were 20 years ago, aren't they? Because why? We, this also can work as a corporate screen as well for society itself. So. That's why it's so important to see the images. Once you start recognizing all the images, when God begins to speak to you, you go, oh, I know which one's God's and which one's not of God. Are you seeing so far? Because what does Jesus say? My sheep hear my voice and none other will they follow. What, what image are you following in your life? Only you can answer that question. What images are you following in your life? And so, what we're going to do next week, we're going to get more into <clears throat> learning how to... We, we, today we talked more about this side of it, learning how to do the negative. Next week we're going to talk more about this side of it and learning how to see what God is trying to show us and what His images that He's trying to project so you can actually begin to hear God's voice and also learn how to dissect it so you can say, oh, now I know what God's voice is. All right? So, I mean, it was a lot today. <laughs> but it's definitely helpful. I know personally, this is more therapy for me. <laughs> Whether you guys are here or not. Because <laughs> I'm learning from it as I study it. And it's a blessing. So, all right? All right, let's just bow our heads. <clears throat> Lord Jesus, we thank you for your word today. For Lord, your word is truth and life to those of us who find it. We ask, Lord, that we might learn to recognize all the images in our life that are controlling us. And that, Lord, most of all, we might be able to hear what your voice is saying and how your voice puts images on our image maker. We bless you and we honor for you all that you're doing and your goodness in our lives. 
We ask this all in your precious name. Amen and amen. Any questions at all?